Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I am finally here to film my September monthly budget spread. I am filming this a little bit late of course per usual. I feel like the past couple of months but I am finally here and I feel like I have a good idea of all of my bills as well as other things going on in the month of September so I'm really excited to kind of show you guys how my spread is going to look. As you guys can see I have a whole new setup. I don't know how it looks behind me but I am in my room at my new apartment and for the most part this is where I now film my videos. I'll probably show you guys a little bit more in detail on my like vlogs because I am trying to you know show my face a lot more on camera and kind of show you guys how I adjust to living on my own. As you guys know my budget planner is actually the Erin Condren monthly planner and I have mine here in the 7x9 size. I'm going to quickly just flip through the pages. I typically like to set up my budget spread right after the dashboard here on the right side so that is where I will set this up right here. I also have all of my stickers here that I'll be using to set up all the pages of my September budget. So today I am using the budget kit and I'm going to go with the floral washi kit right here. I absolutely love this pattern and I think this is going to be the one that I'll be using all month long just because it's so pretty to me. But this is this and Along with that, I have my correlating budget kit for floral, which in particular, I like to use the one that splits your expenses between very one fix. So this is the one I'll be using today. And I think I'm just going to get started. I'm not going to beat around the bush too much because, because I want to get this page all set up and done with so that I can set up the other pages and I won't be behind. I've, I've been mentioning this in a few of my videos, but ever since I went on vacation, I feel like I've been super behind on everything, like videos and like shop related stuff. So I am trying to slowly get back into it. Ooh, I actually have um, some foiled like budget script stickers, which last month I used a, um, last month I used a gold to kind of go with the foil of the month, but this time around I'm going to go back to using the silver foil. I love these foil scripts that I offer in the shop, so let me quickly try to get this off. I don't even know where my tweezers are at. Um, so let's see. I offer these foiled like budget scripts and in our four foils so if you guys want to pick them up to kind of match to either like your coil or if you just want to be fun and get hollow you also can so i'm going to use the september budget silver foil script i hope you guys can see that it's really really pretty and i love it so okay let me start with my income here i already have a mock budget spread here in my soft brown notebook so that I know exactly how much I'll be budgeting for everything and I'm all prepared for this video. I always do this. I always like to set up a mock spread on a soft bound notebook here. I've been doing this for a while now. So I think I'm going to zoom in here. All right, so as you guys know, my income sources are as follows. My main one is my shop, Romina Rosa. So I'm going to write here, Romina Rosa. And I do get a paycheck every single month in the beginning of the month for my shop so that I can cover my bills. So that is my first income source. Then my second one is going to be all of my variable sources of income those being ones like youtube here i also have one for patreon and for other affiliate links that i let's say link in the description box whenever you guys end up purchasing i mean not all the links that i provide in my description box are affiliate links but some of them are so if let's say you end up buying like an erin condren planner through the link that i provide in my description box i get a little bit of a kickback from that it's not too much but it definitely does help and i do appreciate 
every single one of you who takes the time to you know shop through those links so i have both of my income sources there i could put a miscellaneous category here and i'm really sorry my hair is like in a braid i just didn't want it to be all over the place but like i mentioned i did want to go ahead and put a miscellaneous section because i am dedicated to sell some clothes this month i feel like i really need to do that so that not only is my apartment less of a clutter but because i really have a lot of clothes cute clothes that don't fit me anymore and that i could just sell on depop but i'm not necessarily going to make a category here in my monthly budget just because i'm very limited on space so rather i will just include that in my variable income page because i will have to have some expenses from that for like shipping as well as i will have to buy shipping supplies and stuff like that so i will just put that all in that page i thought that made a little bit more sense and now i'm going to move on to my expenses i am going back to cash envelopes this month although i'm not going back to my six cash envelopes that i typically would use i'm actually only doing three for this month because of a variety of reasons i think the main reason has to do with the fact that living here in la is very fast paced and I don't know how using my cash envelopes will really fit with things like eating out, gas, and I think what else am I taking out of cash envelopes and my allowance. I've been seeing patterns in the past with things like my allowance being that I mainly buy things online so it really doesn't make sense to have cash for it and then have to give myself change every time i purchase something online which it does help but i feel like i really don't have a problem with overspending for allowance i usually don't ever spend all of my allowance so that's kind of a change that i've made for this month so i'm dipping my toes back into cash envelopes but i'm not fully going back to all my six just yet i might end up going back who knows all right so i am going to look at my variable expenses and I will let you guys know which ones are cash envelopes as I go through these. So the first one, of course, is my groceries envelope. So the groceries category will be a cash envelope. So I'll just put a C next to it. For this, I am budgeting the same amount that I budgeted last month, which was $200. I think this is a pretty good amount. I might end up lowering it if I see that I'm spending even less of it this month. I think last month was kind of a trial month for me because it was my first month living on my own as well as I had other things going on like going on vacation so I wasn't home for a whole week. So I might be okay with the 200 this time around. I know I, know I um, spent a little bit less last time. We'll see. We'll see about that. But for now, that is what I'm budgeting for groceries. The next I have household. And this category will also be a cash envelope. I think I should put all of the cash envelopes together actually now that I'm like writing it down. So for household, I am budgeting $80 this month, which is $20 less than last month. I honestly don't think that I need many things for household since it's just me as well as I've had a moving out budget for myself for things like appliances and stuff that I may need for my place. That's why I've decided to lower this category from my usual 100 to 80 and I think moving forward that should be enough for me. Um, we will go ahead and just see. Then my last cash envelope that I'll have for this month is going to be for beauty and this is going to be a cash envelope because for the most part once i get my nails done i always pay in cash so it just makes sense to have this as a cash envelope so for beauty i am budgeting a little bit less than last month so it's going to be 225 dollars i do plan on getting my nails done this month in the month of September, I, I believe it was in the middle, so I will only be getting them done once, but I do have to buy things like hair dye, as well as I was running low of conditioner, so that, and I might have to buy my eye cream this month too. So I thought the 225 would be more than enough to get all of those things. And then the other categories that in the past were cash envelopes, but for now, I'm not going to have them as cash envelopes are as follows. So we have eating out, 
I just think that with eating out as of now, since I'm going out with my friends here and there and like with my sister and we end up splitting things, it's just easier to split it with a card than with cash. So that's why this is not a cash envelope this month. But in total, I am budgeting $10 more than I did last month. So I'm giving myself $160. The main reason for this is because I do have a few birthdays coming up and I want to make sure that I I'm okay with eating out money for like birthday dinners and stuff like that. So that's what I'm giving myself for this month. Then I have my allowance category, which for this, I always give myself $100. I always tell this to everyone, but if you are budgeting and let's say a lot of people are like, oh, I budget, but I can't seem to stick to my budget. And most of the times it has to do with the fact that they don't give themselves any allowance money to just spend on whatever they want for various reasons, whether it be because they can't afford it or because they don't think they need it. But then they end up seeing that they're overspending in categories that could have been prevented by just giving themselves an allowance category so for me i found that 100 seems to work for me but of course it, it will just depend on your spending habits and what it is that you spend on a month to month basis and so for allowance i end up spending it on whatever i want it could be like beauty products or more food or like knickknacks here and there like a pen or something pretty at the mall that i see that's what i'll use my allowance money so anything that i want will come out of there and then last but not least for those categories i have my gas category and this is the gas that i pump in my car so i'm just going to put car right next to it since i now have to pay for my other gas bill so i just wanted to differentiate those for gas i'm giving myself 80 dollars this month i was saying that i was going to up this i think i mentioned this in last month that i was going to up my gas budget but i just ended up pumping gas at the very end of august so i think i should be fine with just pumping twice in the month of september i might have to up it once the holiday season comes, but I think $80 should be good for this month. So those are all of my main categories that I like to weekly check in for. So though I'm not going to have these as cash envelopes, I still will be weekly checking in with those every single week with you guys. Then I have other categories like bills. So first up, I have my phone bill. And for this, I am going to be budgeting $72. Next, I have my internet bill, which depending if it's the same amount as last month, it should be. It's going to change, but once I see that the amount doesn't change, I'm going to transfer this category from variable to fix to the fixed expenses section. For now, I'm just budgeting $80. I like The reason I like to keep these in the variable expenses section is because I have space for me to budget an amount and then see at the end of the month if that amount was correct so it could either go up or go down so that's kind of why I keep it I keep this in here and then I have my gas bill which this is due for the first time on the 13th and I'm going to be budgeting $35 I believe I just got my bill and I think it was a little bit under this I want to say but yeah this is due on the 13th and it will be my first time paying my gas bill <laughs> so exciting <laughs> lastly i do like to have a placeholder category on this section for any unbudgeted expenses so if anything comes up that i do not have a budget for this month it will go in this section so i don't budget anything for this um, i know a lot of people use this as a miscellaneous category but for me i don't like to budget anything i just write it in if it comes up and if it does then i'll get to see oh okay i was over this amount if i were to budget something for the unbudgeted section then i wouldn't specifically know how much money i overspent it so i just like to keep it this way and i'm going to just skip a line here i just realized that i had some space so we'll do that 
And those are all of my variable expenses. So these are the expenses that could potentially change within the month. I could spend less than the 200 for groceries. Um, typically I don't spend more if I do have the cash for it. But yeah, that's kind of why they are in this section. Then moving on to the fixed section. So fixed amounts, amounts that don't change, like let's say my rent. I mentioned last month the way that my rent is working, which is a little bit confusing, but I am getting a discount of $500 on the first five months of rent. So after that, I'm going to be paying the amount that it should be, which is 1945. But the first five months I am paying 1445. So in order to keep everything like balanced, I went ahead and added both the five months of the 1445 and the seven months of the 1945, and then just got an average of how much I would be spending monthly, and that is 1735. So what I'm doing is I'm still going to be putting 1445 in every single one of my monthly budgets for rent, but I've created a rent sinking fund where I put the leftover amount from that 1737. So you'll be seeing that in my sinking fund spread, but it is around $292 extra that I'm adding for rent. So then that way, once I have to pay the full price for rent, I'm not struggling or stressed out about coming up with the extra money because 1945 is quite a bit. So I just decided to plan ahead by creating a sinking fund. So you can definitely do that if you're in a similar situation. I don't know if that happens too often with like discounts and stuff, but if you were to be in a similar situation, you can definitely do that. I think that was the smartest thing I could have done to save me some stress in the future. I'm going to go ahead and write rent. And like I mentioned, the amount is going to be $1,445. Then next I'm going to write my car payment in here. And for my car, I pay 348 with six cents. Car insurance is up next, and I pay $200 every single month for car insurance. Then I do have renter's insurance for my apartment, and this did go up because I've changed locations or moved locations. So that went up by like $5, I believe. It is now $15.33 a month. Next, I like to have a category for small subscriptions, those being um, Spotify as well as I have iCloud storage in this. So in total, those two are $6.00. And 99 cents. I also have a category for my student loan payment. This is just for the minimum payment, which is 130.77 that I pay a month. The next category will be my giving category, and I always do $150 for this. So put that there. Next category that I'm going to be adding for this month only is going to be, I guess you can say for tuition for a class. I saw somebody retweet on Twitter once that they were thinking of creating or having a Quechua class, which if you guys don't know what Quechua is, it's the native language in Peru as well as other countries like Ecuador. I believe Bolivia, all in the Andes. And although my family doesn't speak Quechua, my grandma does know a few words here and there because her mom was from a town where they spoke Quechua in. So I just thought it was really nice that I, okay, I'm back after my camera overheated. Back to my fixed expenses and my Quechua class. So yeah, I saw somebody tweeted it on Twitter. It might've been my sister who told me about it or somebody retweeted it. But the point is that it's with the Ketra Collective of New York. And at the time that I'm filming this, the classes are sold out. My class is every Saturday for I believe two hours from seven to 9 a.m which is very doable for me. So I'm really excited about it. And since I already paid for the class, I know exactly how much it is. But if I was budgeting in the beginning of the month and I didn't know, cause I think they were telling us the class was going to be $90, but after like fees and everything, it ended up being 97.11. So I'm going to put here, I'll just write catch what class. I'm really, really excited about it. 
and I've been saying how I've been wanting to go back to school too so this is going to be um, like me dipping my toes back into having a class having like those responsibilities reading and stuff like that so I'm really really excited so once again that was 9711 I believe there's going to be six of these classes and I do plan on staying with it if I like this first class so that will be something that I'll be included in my budget um, when the time comes and then the last category that I have for my fixed expenses will be my sinking funds which I will be stuffing at my sinking funds as well as setting up my sinking fund spread on the next video for you guys so in total I am stuffing these with $841 and those are all of my fixed expenses. So I think I'm going to also skip skip a line here. And just like don't want the sticker there. Perfect. So these are all of my expenses, both fixed and variable. And now I am going to break this up once again with this glitter washi strip and half my total section at the bottom. So this is essentially what I like to do every single month is create a budget for myself. But this is not the only step that I take because creating a budget for yourself is just the first step of understanding and eliminating your spending. Um, so after this, I will be weekly checking in every single week with you guys. I'm going to try to be a lot better at that. So I will be tracking how much I'll be spending for these six categories and how much I have left over for the rest of the month. I think both the cash envelopes as well as making the weekly check-in videos has really kept me accountable for my spending. This is just the method that I use for budgeting and it's been working for me for about or over three years now. So yes, down here on the total section, I'm going to write income and then variable for variable expenses. I feel like my handwriting is not looking too pretty now, but that's okay. And then fixed for fixed expenses. And it gives me just enough space to lay down the balance little header. And then right next to that, I will go ahead and lay down my pattern squared off box. So at the end of the month, once I know how much I've spent for all of these expenses, I will go ahead and put my actuals and whatever amount I have left over once I put my actual income minus my expenses, whatever I have left over in here, I will bring to this box and that will be what will go towards my savings. So yes, let me just go ahead and decorate a little bit more with the deco that I provide within the budget kit and that is going to be my monthly budget setup for the month of September. I'm really happy that this is now all set up and that I can move on to setting up spreads like my sinking funds, my dashboard pages, my monthly view and all of that because I want to already start weekly checking in for all of those categories. But yes, that's all that I have for this video. I really hope that you guys enjoyed seeing my face once again in these budgeting videos as well as seeing my setup for the month. If you guys enjoyed this video as always, please do not forget to give it a huge thumbs up as well as subscribe to my channel if you guys are not subscribed already and make sure to stay tuned for the next few budgeting videos that I'll be having on my YouTube channel and hopefully I will get to see you guys on those videos. Bye guys!